It's a pretty common thing to hear that calisthenics is not good for training your legs and that it is impossible to put on mass by using calisthenics alone. That is simply not true. I will admit that it is easier to progressively overload exercises like the squat, lunge and deadlift because all you need to do is to add weight. But with calisthenics, all we have is our body so we have to get creative. The next argument is usually that because of this limitation in loading, we are simply not able to create enough resistance to induce hypertrophy or muscle growth. Well, research by Sean Schoenfeld et al. conducted a systematic review to compare changes in strength and hypertrophy between low and high load resistance training. They found throughout the included studies that muscle hypertrophy can be equally achieved across a spectrum of loading ranges. And the findings therefore indicate that both heavy and light loads can be equally effective in promoting muscle growth provided training is carried out with a high level of effort. So this means that as long as we can create enough resistance to be able to work the muscle close to failure, we are able to induce muscle growth. In this video, I will give you in no particular order, 10 of the best calisthenics leg exercises that you can do. They will hit every major muscle group below your waist so you can add them in your workout routine to build strength and put mass on your legs. My name's Nikki, this is QED Fitness and before we start, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future video. First up is the pistol squat because when you think of calisthenics leg exercises, the pistol squat is probably the first one you think of. The pistol squat is a great leg exercise and it is challenging enough to be a goal for most people. I already have a full video explaining in detail how to get your first pistol squat which is linked here. To do a pistol squat you extend one leg out straight in front of you and you squat down by pushing your hips back and bending at the knee, lowering yourself down as deep into the squat as you can. The pistol squat is great for developing strength and mobility as well as overloading the quads through their full range of motion. Next up is the the reverse hyper. The reverse hyper is a great way of training the glutes as well as the hip extension capabilities of the hamstrings. This is a movement that every calisthenics athlete should do because training hip extension is quite difficult to do using only your body weight. To perform a reverse hyper, you're going to need a chair or a ledge. Place the crease of your hips right over the edge of the chair. From here, we are going to extend our legs back behind us, feeling a contraction in our glutes and hamstrings. We don't want to be feeling this one in our lower back, so make sure you are controlling the movement at all points and you are not using momentum. You can regress the movement by keeping your knees bent the entire time or if you want to make it harder you can extend your legs behind you. The next exercise is the single leg calf raise. The single leg calf raise is easy to do. All we need to do is hang our heel off a ledge, cross our leg behind us and raise up on our toes as high as we can. It is especially important when training calves to not use momentum. The reason is that your calves insert via the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is the largest tendon in your body and its job is to transfer elastic energy when you are walking so walking isn't so difficult. So if we use momentum and let the Achilles tendon do the work then the calf muscles are doing minimal work. This means that every rep you do should have a minimum one second pause at the bottom and should be done at a slow pace to make sure that it is the calves doing the work and not the slingshot effect of the Achilles tendon. Next up is the reverse Nordic curl. I have already made a video about this and why everyone, calisthenics or not, should be doing this movement and it is linked here. The reverse Nordic curl is a great way of training one of your quadriceps in particular, the rectus femoris. Rectus femoris is not as active as your other quadriceps in movements like the squat and leg press because these exercises involve contracting our quads when our hip is flexed. In this position, our rectus femoris is shortened at both ends so it can't create enough tension to work effectively. To target the rec fem, we need to straighten the knee when our hip remains fixed in extension, which is exactly what the reverse Nordic curl is doing. To do the reverse Nordic, begin kneeling on the floor with your hips extended. You're going to lower your upper body as close to the floor as you can. If you are new to reverse Nordics, I highly suggest putting something behind you to catch you in case your muscles fail, because if there is nothing there, you will fall to the bottom of your end range of knee flexion under load, and that is a recipe for disaster. Next, we have the reverse reverse Nordic curl, or just the Nordic curl. is a great way to train knee flexion using only your body weight. The problem is that it requires an extreme amount of strength. Resistance bands can be a lot of help when you are learning the Nordic curl, but not everyone has access to those. So to get around the strength demands, we are just going to restrict the range of motion. As our strength increases, we can increase the range of motion. A Nordic curl simply involves anchoring your feet under something and lowering your upper body towards the floor whilst keeping your hips extended. And keeping up with the Scandinavian theme, we have the Copenhagen plank. The Copenhagen plank is a great way of developing strength in the adductors or groin muscles and it has been shown to reduce groin injury rates in professional athletes. To do the Copenhagen plank, begin with the inside of your foot resting on a chair or ledge whilst you're laying on your elbow. 
Push your foot into the chair by contracting your adductors. This will raise your hips up. Raise your hips up until your body is in a straight line, pause at the top and then lower yourself slowly and under control. If the full length version is too hard, you can lower the difficulty by bending your knee or holding the plank to develop isometric strength. Number seven is the shrimp squat. Even though this is a single leg squat, much like your pistol squat, it is much harder to get a full range shrimp squat than it is a full range pistol squat. The shrimp squat involves holding one foot behind you whilst you lower down on your other leg and try to touch your knee to the floor. This is hard enough to do in the standard version, but if you would like to make it harder, you can increase the range of motion by beginning standing on a ledge. Next up is the touchdown squat. The touchdown squat is a great way of correcting any discrepancies in strength between your legs and developing balance at all points of the squat. Because of this, it is often found in rehab programs, but it is a fantastic exercise in its own right. To do a touchdown squat, begin on an elevated surface. What we are trying to do is to keep the same squat pattern despite being on one leg. Have the free leg extended straight down and we are going to squat on the support leg by pushing our hips backwards and this will lower our leg towards the floor. Once we get to the bottom, we will lightly touch our foot on the ground and return to the starting position. The key is to only use a height where you can control the squat at all points before your foot touches the ground. Over time, your strength and balance will increase and you can increase the height of the platform. Next is the single leg RDL. Start with a slight bend in one leg and the other off the ground with full extension at the knee. We are going to hinge forward on the support leg by pushing our hips backwards, which will bring our upper body forwards. At the bottom, there should be a straight line from your head all the way to your foot. To achieve this, don't let your upper body collapse or let your back leg flop about behind you. Full body tension is the key here. Another common mistake we want to avoid is to prevent the non-working leg from rotating around as we progress progress into the movement. Make sure the toes of the back foot are pointing straight down to the floor at all times. And lastly, we arrive at the glutes and glute max specifically, which is the largest muscle in your body. The single leg glute bridge is a simple exercise, so to get the best out of it, the subtleties matter. Begin laying down with your upper back supported on a chair or bench. The foot placement matters. We want to bring the foot in so the knee angle is less than 90 degrees, so the hamstrings are shortened in this position. The hamstrings can also extend the hip as well as the glutes, so by putting them in a shortened position, we are diminishing their ability to contribute to the movement. Flex at the non-working hip to stack the weight of the leg right over the working muscles and keep your abs engaged the entire time. So there you go. Hopefully this settles the debate that you cannot train your legs effectively using calisthenics alone. Ten of the best calisthenics leg exercises that you can add to your program to build strength and gain mass. There are many more calisthenics leg exercises that I could have included. So this is not a definitive list. There is many more out there. I hope you got something out of this video and if you did, subscribe to the channel and please share the video. My name is Nikki, this is QED Fitness and remember, knowledge is power. Catch you next time.